All right, moving along. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, talking about love. It is a super important topic to God and should be a very super important topic to us. All right, 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Amen. All right, so now we have this pairing here. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with truth. There was a quote that uh, registered with me. I don't remember it like word for word, but it was something like, uh, show me what a person laughs at and I'll show you their character. Okay. It was like, show me what somebody laughs at and I will, I will show you, I'll, I'll know exactly who they are. Like, I'll tell you what kind of person they are. And I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty deep. And so there's something, there's some lesson we can get from there relating that back to this part of the passage. Uh, what do you rejoice in? What do you rejoice in? Uh, what, what gets you excited? Is it the things of God or the things of this world? I know sometimes there's overlap. For example, Christians, non-Christians, we, we laugh um, when our, our kids, I don't know, um, do something funny, right? Okay, there's overlap. Um, but I'm talking about when it doesn't overlap. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what, what do we rejoice in more um, when things don't overlap? Do we rejoice in the things of God or the things of this world? Uh, true love, true love is God's love. And yes, everybody has love to a degree. Like again, parents can love their children. It doesn't matter what religion you are. But um, uh, that most absolute love, the highest form of love is God's love. And God's love is going to manifest itself in certain ways and is not going to manifest itself in, in other ways. And so uh, what we rejoice in really demonstrates uh, what is really inside of us. And so if you are rejoicing when uh, somebody messes up, another pastor came on the news for all the wrong reasons, and secretly you feel good, uh, you had an argument with somebody, and then the next day they, they got uh, something happened to them, and you start thinking, oh yeah, that was a punishment from God for arguing with me or whatever. Um, yeah, that's, that's not rejoicing with truth. Uh, that is... Um, rejoicing at, at wrongdoing, okay? That's rejoicing at something wrong, something not good. And so uh, we want to be careful at what we enjoy. And uh, more importantly, um, what we enjoy is a fruit of genuinely of who we are. And so this is a great reminder that love is, is not something we just do. You know what I'm saying? It's not just doing, but it's being. It's something that we were transformed at the root. And so when people laugh, there's sometimes a lot of times they can't help it, right? When something's funny to them, they just start cracking up. They can't help it. It's automatic. It's almost second nature. And so here we're reminded that love, the greatest form of love is not rejoicing at uh, people messing up and things going badly for people and um, uh, your enemies uh, messing up and getting getting punished by God even. That's not stuff that uh, we're going to rejoice in. I mean, obviously we need to be careful. We can rejoice in God taking care of evil, this and that uh, for sure. But make sure, uh, even when, when Daniel uh, interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream, and Nebuchadnezzar was going to go crazy for seven years if he didn't repent. Uh, Daniel says, oh, if only this dream was given to your enemies, O king. He really honored his non-Christian pagan king, and um, he didn't want something bad to happen to him. And like that's some crazy love there, don't you think? So yeah, love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Uh, what are you rejoicing in? What gets you excited? Uh, what gets you to smile? What gets you to laugh? That is something to highly consider. Man, there's a quote that's been bugging me. I could look for it, but um, I, it's by Francis Fran Japain. And he says, you know, the violent times of the Colosseum, we basically just put, put it in a TV set. Wow. Like, 
those guys that used to just go to the Coliseum and enjoy all this violence. Um, yeah, we, we just, uh, we, we don't go to Coliseums and watch people kill each other, but we, we go on TV and watch like a million of them. Like, oh my gosh, that really got me. And I don't know what to do with that yet, but it, it definitely did uh, uh, convict me. It did poke at me, and so I do need to do something different. And I need to be careful a little bit more of what I'm watching and what I'm enjoying and what I'm rejoicing in. And uh, yeah, I feel like my job is to leave it there. And then you talk with God on what the lines are and this and that. Uh, everybody's lines are different. Uh, everybody's uh, relationship with God is different. So what may be enjoyable to you may be acceptable at the moment uh, to God, uh, but it may not be for me and, and vice versa. And so my, my definition of what I enjoy, the things that I enjoy, it's changing. Praise the Lord. And so I, I look forward to a time where we're all rejoicing in things only God will rejoice in and not rejoicing in things that God will not rejoice in. I really do hope for that. And that will be a greater, greater, greater form of love. All right, something to think about. All right, we'll see you in the next video on love. God bless.